Lifeguards hit the streets when a woman is hit by a car. Hit the head on the windscreen and then it rolled off. Jethro wipes out the ones he's trying to save. Oh, no. Oh, Jethro. I honestly thought I lost him. And strike a pose. International supermodel Carly Kloss visits Bondi. It's always <laughs> the way, isn't it? As soon as you get married, a supermodel's all over you. <laughs> the boys are just props. They're nothing. Bondi's famous lifeguard tower. The sign on the front door says, knock only in case of emergency. But some people just won't be deterred. My daughter's come all the way from here. She wants to take things to one of your lifeguards. She gets fine when I come on. Any chance you guys have a ball cut or anything? Years of experience in the tower has taught lifeguards how to distinguish between different door knocks. About 90% of the time, a knock to the door is generally nothing too serious at all. Sometimes you get a really urgent knock, it's called a death knock. But when you hear that knock, you know adrenaline starts and you're ready for action. And if you do not turn the speed up to the top there, uh, have a car just to the main junction. Yeah, I've got my central lifeguards. I need someone back to the tower, there's something happened over the road that's been a major accident. The report was that a lady had been hit by a car up on Cowan Parade. Yeah, I might need money. Uh, I'm going to see if you've been uh, off here. Yeah, I'll pop up. Come on up now, man. Details are patchy, but lifeguards must prepare for the worst. I didn't know what to think. It's like Naja was a full-on accident. How far down, you know? It's up on the junction of the uh, road. We see their cops. We're probably thinking like major blood loss or broken parts of some sort. Serious trauma is a job for the paramedics. But in this case, lifeguards are the nearest medical response team. We're lifeguards. We're not trained to attend road accidents. We don't even wear shoes. Barefoot and out of their comfort zone, Hoppo and Corey arrive at Bondi's busy main road to assess the situation. You're all right. Oh, you hold that part. Yeah, that's it. We got there before the ambos, and this lady had a huge gash to the side of her head. I looked at the damage of the car and realised her head's done that. Popper had a quick look, and he just sort of gave me a bit of an eye to say it's not very good. You can see OK? Just holding the side of her head, and there was blood everywhere. There was a lot of blood. Corey controls the bleeding as eyewitness reports come in. Yeah. Um, hit up against the, the windscreen and everything, and then came back off the flat, I wouldn't say she's rolling off it. I wanted to see what the witnesses saw so I could get a gauge on how serious the injuries were. Lifeguards aren't normally called to car accidents. The arrival of paramedics is a relief. The whole time. Yeah, she said she was. The woman is a French tourist. Eyewitnesses say she was looking away as she stepped directly in front of a moving car. I think what happened is she's French, and I've said it before, they step off, she's probably looked the wrong way to where the traffic is. I've done it myself in the US, so I think that's probably what's happened, and she stepped off. That's the first time I've been asked to a car versus person incident and I hope it doesn't ever happen again. But yeah, look, we do get called for all sorts of crazy things down here and it just puts another sense of busyness on the job. Trainees are the apprentices of the Bondi Lifeguard Service. Like all apprentices, they must learn their trade before they can go it alone. Last season, Jethro was promoted to a full-time lifeguard position. Mate, I'm stoked. It's my third summer on the beach now. Seasonal lifeguard, and it's, this summer's going to be bigger than ever. It's kicking off already. You know, it's the first busy day of the season. I'm ready to go. Yeah, Jeff Rowe's really grown up. He's even got himself a girlfriend. Mid-season, and Jethro's golden run hits a very rough patch. I just had a really bad virus, and, and I, I was in hospital, and the doctors couldn't do anything, and I really just had to ride it out. It was definitely the sickest I've ever been in my life. You know, I felt like someone took my personality and just took my soul and threw it in the bin. And I didn't want to get out of bed. I couldn't eat. I lost six or seven kilos, and it really knocked me about. After two days in hospital and four weeks off work, 
Jethro returns to his lifeguarding duties, weighing just 57 kilos. But there's a question mark over his strength and fitness in an emergency. This is the group in a rubber tube third ramp. Jethro's heading there now. Um, hands gone up. A small girl in an inflatable toy is being dragged out in a rip. A bunch of men help. Despite being able to stand, they're no match for the rapid flow of water pulling out to sea. I didn't really know what was going on. I saw a ring, I saw five people and, and arms were waving. When you're bouncing on a sandbank, whether it be 10 metres, 20 metres, 5 metres, it feels like you're, you've just started a 1500 metre race on a track and it goes forever. It's like slow-mo and you can just see the patients going down in front of you. It's, it's the worst feeling ever. When Jethro finally reaches the group, they've moved into deeper water. So I could see that there was there was two Asian gentlemen and a young a young daughter, and obviously the one that was in the deepest trouble was the girl. All right. Exhausted from paddling out, Jethro was caught off guard by a rogue wave. Oh, here we go. Oh no! Oh, Jethro. Jethro's nine-foot rescue board turns into a wrecking ball. When I popped up, there was only one above water, so they were still underwater, and I, I honestly thought I lost them. A nearby surfer has snatched the girl up from underwater. It's always confronting when you rescue young kids. They're so helpless against the ocean. So gnarly. That little girl is so helpless. It was really hectic for a second there. Sh shaking a bit. Oh, yeah. The reason why you've got to be 100% fit and healthy down here as a lifeguard is because we're dealing with the ocean and it's always unpredictable. Celebrity sightings are common at Bondi. Mr Bean, Zac Efron and Paris Hilton, who was accompanied at the time by her as yet unknown assistant, Kim Kardashian. Today, a major international model is coming and she is ruffling feathers amongst the lifeguards. Yeah, we were kind of thinking, who is this? We found out that it was um, the international supermodel, Carly Kloss. Today, Vogue magazine have handpicked some off-duty lifeguards for the shoot. I said all our headshots are up on the Channel 10 site, so they went to that and picked the four faces out of the whole group. So I suppose we're the lucky four that got picked. Hoppo for this one, I think, had to call up the pretty boys. Well, obviously they left Jess and I out of it. Making the cut, starstruck trainee Tommy. She's the nicest celebrity guy she yeah. For her fame and stuff and how beautiful she is. She's really nice. Not all the lifeguards share the excitement. They're just extras. They're nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the guys don't get picked are probably up their bag and the shit out of us. <laughs> <laughs> They're absolutely nothing. They're just props. Yeah, we all couldn't work out why Tommy got a start. You know, it's first year as a trainee and I know it must have been his hairdo. She did yeah. say that she wanted to be next to you because yeah. your hair were very similar. Too short. I was uh, pretty gutted. I went and got a special haircut for the shoot and uh, I don't think it worked for Vogue. I have no idea why they chose those guys. Yeah, we're working. Yeah, we're working, otherwise they would have used us, wouldn't they, Box? She liked my hair, she gave me a compliment. That's, you know, I've got 35 lifeguards that bag out my hair and one supermodel that loves it, so it's worth it. Seeing young Tommy in his prime, Kerbox conjures up memories of the good old days. Yeah, Tommy, mate, I've one message for you, mate. Look out, cos uh, hang on to that hair, brother, cos it don't hang around for too much longer. 